Hello and welcome to today's episode of Legal Wrangle. We will present before you excerpts from some decision rendered by the Supreme Court of India and the various high courts enunciating the latest developments in the field of indirect taxes. Let us begin with the first case at hand. The appellant company manufactures paper using conventional and non-conventional raw material. During manufacture activity, waste paper arose and the same was recycled in the manufacture process by making pulp. Later, after entry in the RG1 register, the paper was found to be defective and unfit for sale and so was required to be reprocessed or else be rejected, repulped and recycled. The appellant had filed a refund claim in respects of duty paid on waste paper, but the same was rejected. Hence, the present ap appeal was filed involving the issue as to whether in the absence of any challenge to the order of assessment in appeal, any refund application against the assessed duty could be entertained. The larger bench of the Apex Court observed that an order of self-assessment is an order of assessment as per Section 2, Clause 2 of the Customs Act and as such it is appealable in case any person is aggrieved by it. There is a specific provision made in Section 17 to pass a reasoned or speaking order in the situation. In case on verification, self-assessment is not found to be satisfactory and order of reassessment has to be passed under Section 17 Clause 4. It also held that Section 124 of the Act did not provide for an appeal against a speaking order, but against any order which is of wide amplitude. Hence, the provision of Section 27 could not be invoked in the absence of any amendment or modification having been made in the Bill of Entry based on which self-assessment had been made. The bench also opined that refund proceedings have the nature of execution for refunding an amount and do not entail assessment or reassessment proceedings at all. It observed that while processing of refund application, reassessment is not permitted. Condition of exemption cannot be adjudicated. It clarifies that reassessment could be carried out under Section 17 Clause 3, 17 Clause 4, and 17 Clause 5 only. Hence, the bench held that the refund claim could not be entertained unless the order of assessment or self assessment is modified in accordance with the law through appropriate proceedings and it would not be within the can of section 27 to the set aside the order of self-assessment and reassess the duty for making refund. Thus, the tribunal's order was sustained and contrary decision of the High Courts of Delhi and Madras in respects of the same issue were quashed. Let's proceed to the next case. Briefly put, the issue in these appeals is as to whether by invoking the doctrine of promissory estoppel could the Union of India be stopped from withdrawing the exemption from payment of excise duty in respect of such products, which were earlier eligible for exemption by virtue of an earlier notification, more so where such benefit is revoked in public interest. The notification number 71 of 2003 CX exempted goods specified in the first and second schedule to the CETA other than goods specified in Annex Show 1 to the said notification. From the payment of duties under the Additional Duties of Excise Act 1957 and Additional Duties of Excise Act 1978, such exemption was available to units located in Sikkim. Later on, notification number 21 of 2007 CE amended the earlier notifications as per certain items such as pan masala, tobacco and manufactured tobacco, substitutes the plastic carry bags of less than 20 microns were denied exemption from excise duty. In red, the High Court of Sikkim held the petitioner companies to be eligible for refund. A similar order was also passed by the Guwahati High Court. Revenue is in appeal against the three orders. The larger bench of the Apex Court observed it to be the triad law that the doctrine of promissory estoppel could not be invoked in the abstract and that courts were bound to examine all aspects, including the objective to be achieved, the public good at large, as well as the fundamental principle of equity. 
The bench reiterated that the doctrine of estoppel had to yield where the equity so demanded and when it could be shown that in the peculiar facts circumstances it would not be equitable to hold the government or public authority to its promise, assurance or representation. The bench also observed that withdrawal of exemption in public interest was matter of policy and the court would not bind the government to its policy decision for all times to come. Irrespective of the government's satisfaction that change in the policy was necessary in public interest. Moreover, in such case, the public interest would override any consideration of private loss or gain. In the present case, the withdrawal of the exemption on account of severe resource crunch was found to be valid as well as in public interest. The bench also noted that once public interest is accepted as the superior equity overriding an individual equity, the same principle was applicable in cases where the period is prescribed. Hence, where public interest warrants it, the principle of promissory estoppel can, cannot be invoked in the bench held. The bench also referred to scientific research conducted by experts who reported that the consumption of pan masala with as well as without tobacco is hazardous to health. The experts report also drew attention to the alarming rise in number of teenage persons consuming such products hence exposing a considerable chunk of the nation's youth to the risk of cancer. In such circumstances, the bench observed that the decision of the state to withdraw the exemption granted for manufacture of such products could not be said to not be in public interest. Hence, the larger bench found the reasoning of the High Court of Sikkim to be erroneous. The bench also found shocking the findings of the High Court of Guwahati to the effect that the withdrawal of exemption to tobacco products was not in public interest and unsustainable. With such observations, the appeals of the Union of India were allowed. Let's move to the last case. The petitioner had approached the High Court praying for the issuance of direction lifting the attachment over bank accounts belonging to them. In the first round of litigation, the petitioner had challenged the order of provisional attachment whereupon the court disposed of the application with certain directions. When it was pointed out to the revenue that it could have invoked provisions of section 74 for passing a provisional attachment order under section 83, the revenue authority concerned issue a corrigendum to correct such mistake. Thereafter, the High Court had directed the petitioners to file objections to the action taken under Section 83, the 83 of the Act by availing the provisions of Rule 159 Clause 5 of the Rules. The Court then held that the petitioners' request to withdraw the orders issued under Section 83 deserved to be quashed, being devoid of merit. Hence, the present writ petitions were filed against such an order. The issue at hand here is whether the Revenue Authority concerned was justified in invoking Section 83 of the Act for passing an order of attachment of bank accounts. The court observed from the facts at hand that an amount of about Rs 4.13 crore had been paid in excess of the credit amount availed. In such circumstances, the interest of the government revenue could not be said to be at stake. The availment of credit was found to be justified on account of a revenue neutral situation and payment of tax although not payable, yet it is to be treated if unavailable credits were reversed if they were wrongly paid. The court also observed that the Section 83 of the SGST Act enables provisional attachment of any property during pendency of proceedings for assessment or reassessment. Even if no demand is outstanding against the assessee, where the AO opines that such action is warranted in the revenue's interest. The court opined that the such provision protected the revenue's interest where raising of demand is likely to take time because of investigations and if there is apprehension that the assessee may default the ultimate collection of the demand. The High Court further opined that orders of provisional attachment must be recorded in writing and there must be some material indicating that the assessing authority formed an opinion on the basis thereof that it was necessary to attach the property for protecting the revenue's interest. 
It was also observed that the power conferred by the assessing authority under section 83 was drastic and far reaching and was to be used sparingly on substantive grounds backed by valid reasons. While section 83 does not incorporate any safeguards, however, such powers must be excised only if there is reasonable apprehension that the SSC may default the ultimate collection of the demand likely to be raised on completion of assessment. The court also cautioned that such powers be exercised with extreme care and circumspection. It was observed that such powers of attachment were not to be used as a tool to harass the assessee or else cause any detriment to the assessee's business. It was also observed that no hard and fast rule could be laid down regarding the usage of such powers and that the discretion exercised in this regard would be based upon a reading of the facts and circumstances of each case. With such observations, the attachment orders in the present case were quashed. No hard and fast rule can be laid down as to how and under what circumstances the power under Section 83 can be invoked by the authority. The discretion conferred on the authority shall be brought to bear having regard to the facts and circumstances of each case. It is not permissible for the authority to equate the provisional attachment envisaged under Section 83 of the Act with attachment in the course of the recovery proceedings. All the six writ applications succeed and are allowed. The orders of provisional attachment of the bank accounts of the writ applicants are hereby quashed and set aside. This brings us to the end of today's episode of Legal Wrangle. Please stay tuned for TIULTube.com for our upcoming videos. Please also share your opinions and suggestions with us at editor at the rate TIUL.in. Thank you for watching.